Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day as we continue into Easter Sunday, now the second day of the octave of Easter, and we recognize the power that you displayed in the resurrection of Christ and that power that brings us to a whole new vision of what it means to be a human being. And we celebrate this. We celebrate this all Easter season. We celebrate this, of course, during the octave of Easter. And we praise you for all that you have done for us through the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, welcome to the Easter season. Obviously, the Easter season began yesterday with Easter Sunday, or you could even say on the Easter vigil, but here we are in the Easter season. A little bit of background on it. We've just finished Lent, and of course, now we go into Easter. Well, Easter by default is one week longer than Lent. Lent is six weeks long. Easter is seven weeks long, and the reason is because we are... Easter Christians more than we are Lenten Christians, which means we celebrate more the resurrection of Christ than we do uh, live in penance. So it's a powerful numbers uh, communication through the the numbers of of how many weeks we have in each season that communicates our focus is always on resurrection. Our focus is on the joy of resurrecting the joy of knowing Christ and the joy that all that he has done for us more than it is focused on how we have fallen short. So we keep that in mind. We we have a balance between the two, but the balance leads us to be more focused on what the Lord has done for us and recognize that that grace of the Lord is is there. And that's an important focus because many Catholics will, and I, I think this is because of teaching that was not done correctly, Many Catholics will be focused on the penitential way, and they'll always be focused on penance. Um, They will also be lost in the idea, and I have to express this correctly. I have to really express this correctly, is that most people will not be saved. The fact is that no one really knows how many people are will be saved and how many people will not. There is the statement that, Uh, Jesus says, where he talks about there is the narrow road and the wide road, but he never talks about how many people are on it. He says there are many people, but never gives us a number. And that's important because Father Paulo Ricardo Acevedo Jr. from Brazil teaches that what his message there is that there is a wide road and there is a narrow road. You walk the narrow road. So there's no numbers there. And it's important that we understand. But what that also means, and we'll be looking through that throughout this entire week, what that also means is a complete different understanding of who we are as human beings. This is something that I think has been lost in a lot of circles. So let me explain to you what that means. Putting it really simple, that once Jesus resurrected from the dead, that changed everything. Everything changed with that. That was one of those moments that nothing was the same after that. And not only for the Jews at the time, but ultimately for all people. So we have to realize that, therefore, the understanding of who we are changed radically at that moment. If you think of it this way, if you were to have lived at the time Jesus resurrected from the dead, and you happened to see him resurrect, maybe... um, You saw him on the very first Easter Sunday. Maybe you were one of the disciples on the way to Emmaus, clearly one of my favorite readings. Maybe you were somebody else, and somehow you saw Jesus on the first day he resurrected from the dead. You wouldn't have said, oh, look, Jesus resurrected from the dead. I guess he is who he said he is. Have yourself a good day. You would realize that his resurrection changed everything. Nothing that you understood to be the way it was prior to his resurrection was now the same. 
everything changed. And you can see that reflected well in both the prologue of John and the first letter of John. Both cases, they really talk about everything has changed now. This is one of the reasons why I get really frustrated when people are talking about the whole idea we have to be good enough to get to heaven. That is not Catholic teaching. It is not Christian teaching. Uh, We do not earn our way to heaven. We actually, if you think about it, maybe this is where the misunderstanding comes in. We don't earn our way to heaven. We earn our way to hell. Well, wait a minute. Of course, that's not a word we want to talk about in Easter, but I want to bring that up. You have to take specific actions which basically push God out of your life in order to end up in hell. You have to take specific actions uh, to bring uh, Christ in your life uh, in order to enter heaven, but there are two different sets of actions, and one of them is a very clear choice to reject everything to do with God's grace coming out to you. So I guess I could say we don't earn our way to heaven, which I know many evangelicals will be listening to this saying, yes, we know that. Well, there are some Catholics that don't. And that's why it's so important to understand that. We don't earn our way to heaven, but we do earn our way to hell. And you'd say, well, why would I want to earn my way to hell? My point, you don't. Um, so, so understand that. So the, but there was so much to talk about in light of that, and I've just scratched the surface. So let's take a break, and I will be back on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight and St. Anthony in Alston. Have you told anyone else about St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, here on WEZE in the early morning and through CatholicAudioMedia.com? You realize we are a different Catholic program because we are not speaking just to Catholics. We, we speak, speak to ex Catholics, atheists, evangelicals, evangelicals, and, and people, people from, from all different religious and non religious backgrounds. backgrounds. We do this from a Catholic perspective. So you're not going to hear what you hear on other programs because we have a different mission serving Jesus Christ. Tell your friends what we do here is different, and it is so that we all may experience Jesus who sets us all free. And don't forget our own website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. Well, so here we are. We're talking about this powerful message. So we understand, as I was saying before the break, that we don't earn our way into heaven. We earn our way into hell. And so, therefore, since we don't want to go to hell, we can choose not to earn our way into hell. So how do we earn our way into heaven? As I said, we don't. But we recognize now with Jesus resurrecting from the dead, Everything is different now. Everything has changed. And if we look at the prologue of John, we can clearly see this, where uh, in that prologue, it's right there that it's not focused on, or the John is not focused on, now we know that the gates of heaven are open, we have to be good so we can get there. No, it's talking about we've come and experienced the one who came to be the light that shines into the darkness. The darkness does not overcome it. And therefore, we have been created to be children of God. That's a very powerful message. It's a very powerful. See, it's a whole different thing. Our whole identity is now changed. And remember, this message is now going out into the whole world. Prior to the death and resurrection of Jesus, the entire message of the Judeo-Christian uh, Christian message, which at that time was only the Judeo message, was for the Jews. It did not really cross over into the cultures around it. it, it as a matter of fact, look at the words of St. Paul. I'm not St. Paul. I'm sorry. I'm talking about getting the, the name wrong. Look at the words of Pontius Pilate. <laughs> Two, by the way, in case you didn't know that, St. Paul and Pontius Pilate are two completely different and just about opposite people. So <laughs> I don't know how I did that. So anyway, look at the words of St. Uh, of, I don't want to it again, of Pontius Pilate. <laughs> he says, when Jesus says, I came to testify the truth, truth, what is truth? He doesn't understand what that is. And we recognize that Jesus is now testifying to something that is beyond most 
people and some people within the Jewish community are just starting to get it just a tiny bit. And then as they grow it into an understanding and a realization and everything, what it means, then they go out and spread the word. And that has been going on for the past 2000 years. And that whole new uh, understanding is we now have a deeper realization of who we are as human beings. And the Lord has come to lead us to the light that shines into the darkness. And we are now completely different than we were prior to the death and resurrection of Jesus. That's very clear in the scriptures. It's very clear in the writing. And it's Jesus leading us down a whole new path of being of who we truly are. So this is a powerful moment, and I didn't get to talk about the readings today, but don't worry, we'll be going through the readings, some of the readings this week, because I could talk about this forever because it really reflects a complete total understanding of who we are as human beings that is different from the way people understood themselves prior to the death and resurrection of Jesus. We will talk more tomorrow. In the meantime, have yourself a blessed day. And we are here every single Monday through Friday at midnight and three o'clock in the morning. See you then. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com. And you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out CatholicTV.com. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.